Hey, what's up? This. So white is actually curving. Um, no it's not. It's just bending several times. Appears like it is curving, but it's not. Here's another example of bending this lie. See, just like here in the first experiment, the light is reflecting from the surface of the water. So are you seeing that you can't curve the light? If you are seeing that, challenge accepted. But more on that later. So light is control. But what is this light? Where does it come from? What is light in general? I like the last part. What is light? Let's start with it. So light is an electromagnetic wave carried by a photon. A photon that is when it's going through this space it gives us an electromagnetic wave like this. You see it right now. Where does it come from? When particles come goes from a higher state of energy to a low one, creates a photon, goes through the space as light, and that is how the sun gives us light, that is how anything gives. Now, as we know what light is, we should know why colors, why there's colors, why red is red and blue is blue, because of the wavelength. And there's a little spectrum. So you know which wave gave us which color, like 700 nanometers means red. Now we finish the visible light, but the spectrum doesn't contain only visible light, it also contains another wavelength, which we can't see. They are right here around us, but we can't see right now, but we can know that they exist. And some are really harmful, like the UV from the sun may cause us skin cancer. Now enough from light, let's go to the light. Amplification by stimulated emission of radiation, which we know as laser, which in this term, the light contains every wavelength, like infrared, ultraviolet, x-rays, gamma ray, and another. But doesn't contain the radiation, of radio waves because it's not, not called lasers, it's called maser. And now you see the main difference between a laser and a maser is just the wavelength of the output. In 1917, Albert Einstein established the theoretical foundation of the lasers, and that was on the kind of theory of radiation. And he talks about absorption, spontaneous emission, and stimulated emission, which we're gonna talk about in a second. But wait, he doesn't create it, he just put the foundation. So there's those guys, this large list, which all of their work combined to make a laser. And now, how do lasers work? What does it contain? First thing first, what does it contain? It contains a gay medium, an output coupler, and a high reflector, and a laser pump energy, which give us the beam. The laser consists of a gay medium and a way to energize it some mechanism to neutralize it, and something to give us an optical feedback, like the apple coupler and the higher reflector, which are, by the way, two mirrors. And the key medium is a material with properties that allow it to amplify light with smooth emission. Light of a specific wavelength passed through the medium is amplified, aka increased in power, for the light to be amplified, the key medium should be supplied with energy 
and that process called pumping. And to pump anything, you should give it some power, like this flashlight, or you can do it by another laser. The most common types of lasers use two mirrors as an optical feedback. So the light bounces back and forth between the mirrors through the gain medium and amplify each time. Typically one of the mirrors, which is the outward coupler every time, it is partially transparent, so the light comes up from here, like right now. See it? And now let's talk about the real physics of that. The electron in the classical physics orbits around the nucleus. That's not the case. Because they say that when it's given energy, it's going further. But quantum mechanics says that the electron could have states of energy, like places can stay in. And how far the first state is? Maybe here. Maybe here. It is one millionth of the proton's radius. Like here. And how is what is the size of the proton to the electron? If the proton was an apple, the electron should be a third. Let's say, for example, the electron is in this state of energy for the nucleus when it gets a certain amount of energy from a photon comes up to here. This state of energy. But it doesn't stay there forever. It comes down, making the same photon with the same wavelength. And this process of making this light, the same light that is absorbed, it's called spontaneous emission. The phrase spontaneous emission means that the photon that is emitted goes randomly. A material with many atoms in such an excited state may thus result in radiation, which is very spectrally limited. But the individual photons would have no common phase relationship and would go in random directions. This is the mechanism of the Florences. But when we pump the game medium, its atoms eat the atoms eat the photons and goes into a higher state of energy. And that is called absorption. But when the atoms goes down, it gives us a photon and that's called stimulated emission. Wait, wait. You gotta say what is the difference between spontaneous emission and the stimulated emission? You gotta talk about it. It goes because of the electrons. Now as we know our game medium is pumped and our atoms are in the higher state of energy. What's gonna happen is Adam gives us an, a photon and it can go in several directions like this way and this way and all around. But when this photon sees another atom with a higher state, that makes the stimulated emission atom goes down and it gives us another photon and now we have two photons but two photons don't make anything can we amplify them more yes we can so now we pump up again and electrons goes into a higher state another time and because of the mirrors the same two photons comes again and that amplify them another time and makes 
four photos as they go with those two atoms. And I think that there is a billion atoms like this that makes a simple light very, very focused and very narrow beam spectrally. And that is the laser. And now we have bazillion photons going back and forth between two reflecting mirrors. How can we make things of this? How can we take this light and use it? So, the output coupler and the high reflector are not the same. The high reflector always reflect, but the output coupler give us the output. Why is that? So the apple coupler is basically a mirror that makes the light come out if it was very high powered, like a bazillion photons. When a bazillion photons are there going back and forth, some of them go through the output coupler and that is the laser beam that we use to fire. And now we have the output of the laser. But, how does it go? Does they go together forever? And the answer is absolutely not. There is a diffraction. There is always some angle that these lights are close to. So, if this laser goes like that, there is an angle. There is lasers that have more than this angle, it is like this angle, and some lasers are just close enough to the perfect point zero 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 one, which is not that bad, but it's not perfect. These lasers that are just close enough to the perfect word are called Gaussian beams, which are discovered by Gaussian, and because of the diffraction, a small laser like this, if it is directed to the moon, it covers 500 kilometers. 500,000 kilometers. But we can't see it because of the diffraction of the moon. And that's it for this video. But this is not the end of the story. What do we use lasers for? That is what we cover in the next video. It is on Monday. And don't forget about the challenge coming on Monday as well. See you there.